think uh, one really interesting thing about the Chicago land fishing scene is it attracts a lot of people who you wouldn't typically think would fit into the overall bass fishing world. These are lots of folks who, you know, grew up in the city, grew up in the suburbs, um, have lots of different interests outside of, you know, the typical, you know, fishing and hunting crowd uh, of a lot of other tournament series. So it was really interesting to, to meet these people um, and, and understand how different, you know, fishing, bass fishing specifically, can be in lots of different regions. I'm JP High. I'm 36 years old. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Bass fishing about my life. It's all I think about. I eat fishing, drink fishing, listen to fishing music. That makes no sense. What's fishing music to you? Hip hop. The dope. At about 12 years old, I begged my parents to buy me a set of turntables. Rock bands were never really my forte. My name is Ryan Whitaker. I am 36 years old. I live in Chicago, Illinois. Growing up, I don't remember a lot of toys. Like, you know, I had Hot Wheels and stuff like that, but my toys were fishing lures and my skateboard and my guitar. My family is really very open-minded, uh, very supportive of passions and hobbies. Like everybody had something going on other than work. You know, work was never even really talked about. It was like, what are you doing after work? I met Ryan at a city park called Humble Park Lagoon. I, had, I was actually on the phone with the singer of my band, who's also a fisherman, Dan Lastic, and he said, yeah, there's this guy, JP, at Humboldt Park, and he's got a baitcaster with a crankbait. And that was amazing, because there was nobody with a baitcaster, or you know, someone that knew bass fishing at Humboldt Park. There just weren't bass fishermen there. And he was the first guy who walked up with three bass fishing setups, and I went, this guy's no joke. I'm, I might have met my best friend. There was no middle. It was like, oh, you fish and you live in the city? Like, we're fishing together. That's, that's gonna happen. So one really fun, unique thing about fishing in Chicago is a lot of times you're fishing pretty non-traditional types of bass structures. Typically in areas like the south, people are fishing maybe some farm ponds, some creeks, rivers, some larger reservoirs, and they will almost turn their nose at more urban areas just because it doesn't look as picturesque and doesn't look as bassy, if you will. But in areas where JP and Ryan are fishing in downtown Chicago, you're fishing a concrete jungle essentially that bass have came into this area and made it their own. And it's a really, really cool setting when you really understand it, learn it, and fish it. Um, and it provides a lot more fishing opportunities than most people realize in urban areas. Coming up, uh, fishing in the Chicagoland area, JP and Ryan were kind of legends in the in the local circuit. It seems like every time you look at a local leaderboard or from a, a Saturday or Sunday tournament, uh, JP and Ryan were always at the top. And so they they seemed to have something that, that everyone else in the area didn't have. Um, so I was intrigued by you know what they were doing differently, um, what it was that was causing them to have so much consistent success compared to a lot of other people in this area. So one of those first times we fished together. He was throwing a, a big jig, like a heavy jig, uh, almost a flipping jig um, for smallmouth on Lake Michigan. And he was catching a lot of fish on these things. But he's hanging it up in the rocks. I had a problem, he had a problem. I mean, he's going through like $100 of jigs a day. That was when the wheels started turning. I'm like, so we need something lighter that is gonna come through these rocks and something with a 90 degree uh, line tie that's not gonna hang up as much. But these, these are big fish in gnarly cover that you need to be able to get out. 
so you need to be able to throw it on heavy line. So you need the heavy hook. He came up with this thing, gave me one. I laughed at it. I laughed at the small hook. I laughed at the small weight, but it worked. It worked, and I fished a whole week. I caught giants, and I still had one jig that he gave me. I came back to him, and I said, dude, this thing's legit. I remember the one Facebook post I caught maybe a five pound smallmouth and just had that jig hanging out of its mouth. And this was shortly after we made the, the prototypes and started fishing them. Started getting messages from people around the area. What can you tell me about that jig in the mouth of that fish? And I'm like, well, I make it. And uh, what else do you want to know? <laughs> When they said, oh, you're making that, give me a hundred of them. And I'm like, a hundred? That's gonna take me three weeks. You know, so that, that was kind of when I was like, can I figure out how to make a lot of these things? Then we opened up a website, and that was like opening Pandora's box. And the, the first order was for 75 jigs. That's a lot of time. I mean, we sit down and hand tie every one. There's, there's two of us, there's no way we can keep up. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. And this is what I want to do, so I'm going to do it. I don't see the obstacles. I just see where I want it to go, and I'm going to get it there. My buddy Ryan was so broke, I couldn't get any jigs. I used to go to a job site and uh, get the lead from the plumbers and bring them all this lead, and I waited and waited and waited. But finally, finally, <laughs> I think I might frame this. <laughs> he hooked me up. <laughs> I just wanted to help people catch fish, man. There's a lot of people that have told us they caught their personal best smallmouth on this jig, or even personal best largemouth on this jig. And that, that's all I want. Fishing has been huge to us. We want to see everyone have that same happiness from it. This makes us happy. We're going to make it one way or another. At Catchco, we've developed a brand called Catchco Collaborations, and we think that there's a lot of really great opportunity um, out there in the fishing world where, you know, someone might have a really great innovative product, but they just don't have the, the mass production capabilities to bring it to a ton of different people. Ryan and, and JP specifically with Tightrope Jigs, these are the guys that, you know, are hand tying these jigs and couldn't keep them in stock. You'd be on a wait list for months to try to get these jigs from them, and it, it wasn't because they were slow at making them, it was because they were in such high demand from everyone in this area. And so, we really wanted to partner with them, and I reached out to them and said, you know, you guys have a really great thing going with tightrope jigs, and I was wondering if you wanted to take it to the next level and really introduce it to, to a whole new group of anglers through Mystery Tackle Box, through Carl's, and get it into a bunch of people's hands all over the country. And they were really excited for the opportunity. So this is the sample packaging. Oh, look at my face. Awesome, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> the goal was never have our face on a package. <laughs> it was more Let's survive and keep fishing as much as we can. The goal wasn't even to sell the jig. I mean, we just, I just made it for him and I to catch fish and try to gain an edge in tournaments in, in Chicago here. So yeah, to be able to like pass this on and maybe this will get a kid into fishing. You know, maybe a kid that struggled is gonna get this jig and, and get his first good bite and then just be obsessed for the rest of his life. <laughs> I don't know if that's a great thing, but it has been for me. I love it. Everything Ketchco has done has been amazing. Them coming to us, like they didn't have to come to us to do this. We got nothing to lose. That is still the thing that's like amazing is that, you know, they didn't, we were just making this jig. They could have made a jig. We would have seen it. But, uh, you know, they want, they want to help tightrope because they, they believe in what we're doing. And uh, I hope this sort of thing catches on because fish, fishing is a tight-knit community. You know, it's very small. And it's big, but it's small. Everybody knows everyone. And if, if we all, like, work together and this, is, things can be better for everyone. A 
think being different can create success because it's more reflective of what the actual fishing market looks like. Um, I think that professional anglers, for example, um, aren't really representative of, of the entire you know, fishing community in the United States at large. Um, there are people from all walks of life, um, not just in the country, but also in suburbs and in the city like Chicago, who love fishing and, and don't always see you know, their personality represented in a lot of these brands. Um, and I think that working with people like JP and Ryan um, really illustrate that, that fishing um, doesn't have just one look and, and an angler doesn't have to look like just one thing. I mean, most bass fishermen we know, they're just like us. They're hardcore. And you create this bond over some stupid fish you chase. Are me and Ryan normal in that world? No. He skateboards, plays in punk bands. I listen to weird rap music and sometimes spray paint walls. Who knows? Are we normal? No. And we're from Chicago.